Today we're looking at lesson 2-4, equations with no solution or infinitely many solutions. That may sound scary, but no solution just means it doesn't have an answer, and infinitely many solutions means there's a whole bunch of answers. Infinite, never-ending supply of them. Our learning targets are going to be identifying equations that have no solution, so can we work the problem and come out with, hey, there isn't a right answer to this? And identifying equations that have infinitely many solutions. Can we work the problem and say, oh, there's everything's basically an answer? Well, not everything, but there's a lot of stuff that's an answer. Let's look at our math tip real quick. Equations are true when both sides of the equation have the same value. Okay, 2 plus 3 equals 5 is true because 2 plus 3 does equal 5 and it is equal to 5. It is the same value. 2 plus 3 equals 6 is a false mathematical statement because 2 plus 3 is 5 and not 6. Remember that a solution of an equation with one variable is a value of the variable that makes the equation true. Number 1. The set of numbers 1 half, 3, 6, 17, 0, and 11 contains possible solutions to the following equations. Determine which of these numbers are solutions to each of the following equations. So, here's what they want us to do. They want us to plug in each one of these numbers into these equations for x. Okay, replace the x's with one half and the, see if what works out. Replace the x's with three. See what works out. Six. 17, and so on. Okay, we'll do A. So, 9 times 1 half plus 5. Miss Sarah Williams, can you come to the office, please? 4 times 1 half plus 2 plus five times one half. Then we're going to see if nine times three plus five is equal to four times three plus two plus five times three. Nine times six plus five equals to four times six plus two plus five times six. Nine. Nine times seventeen plus five. Is that going to be equal to four times 17 plus 2 plus 5 times 17. 9 times 0 plus 5. Will that be equal to 4 times 0 plus Miss Mr. Rod, Ms. Paradine, and Miss Elliot, will you please come to the office? Plus 5 times 0. And five, nine times eleven plus five is that equal to four times eleven plus two plus five times eleven? So let's check these real quick. The left side is just going to equal nine point five. The right side will equal 12.5, so that is not a solution. It doesn't equal. Here we're going to have 27 plus 5, which is 32. And that's going to equal 4 times 5, which is 20, plus 5 and 5, which is 15, so 20, 15, 35. Nope. Not a solution. Then 
This will be 54 plus 5, which is 59. And we're going to see if that is equal to 4 times 8 is 32 plus 30, which is 62. Nope, not a solution. 9 times 17 is going to be 153 plus 5 is 158. And 4 times 19 is going to be 76 plus 5 times 17, which is 85, 76 plus 85 is 161. Nope, not a solution. And then 0 plus 5 is 5. Is that equal to 4 times 0 plus 2, which is 8, plus 5 times 0, 0, 5 equals 8? Nope, not a solution. None of these were a solution. None of them actually worked out. Oh, we still have one more. So far, two be a solution. 9 times 11 is 99, plus 5 is 104. Is that equal to 4 times 11 plus 2 is 13? 52 plus 55 is 107. Oh, no, none of these are a solution. Not a solution. They do not work out to be the same thing on both sides, they don't have the same value. Five is not the same as eight. So none of these are a solution for this equation. I want you to practice B for right now. Don't You don't need to try C, but it's the same thing. Plug each one of these numbers into the x's for b work them out and see which one is going to be a solution if any so just right here seven times each of these numbers minus 10 equals three times each of those numbers plus 14 is i'll give you a hint that there is going to be at least one with a solution on this problem but you're going to ignore C for right now. If you can do B, I think you can probably do C. So let's just try out one of them for right now. B, do these sets of numbers in for X. When you're ready, let's look at the next one. An equation has no solution if there's no variable of, I'm sorry, no value of the variable that will create a true mathematical statement. An equation has infinitely many solutions if there are an unlimited number of values of the variables that will create a true mathematical statement. Laura, Nia, and Leo solve the following three equations as shown. Identify each equation as having one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Well, let's see what Laura did. Laura did all of her math and came up with negative 11 fifteenths equals X that's one solution because you have a def definite answer negative 11 fifteenths equals X 2 equals 2 okay she worked out this side and she worked out this side and she came out with 2 equals 2. I know Miss Candy Jones, Miss Diane Farrington, and Mr. Ezell to come to the office. This is going to be infinite many solutions. The answer is the same on this side. You're going to get the same answer over here for whatever number you replaced. 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 2. If I said 5, 
3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17. It's the same over here. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17. If I said 100, 3 times 100 is 300 plus 2 is 302. Or 3 times 100 plus 2 is 300 plus 302. It's the same thing. It's infinite. Many solutions. Infinite. It's hard to write with this thing. Hold on just a second. Infinite. Many solutions. And then over here we have 6 equals 7. That is not true. That is no solution. So an easy way to remember, if you have one answer, it's one solution. If a number equals a variable, it's one answer. If a number equals itself, it's infinite. Number of solutions. That means you're always going to get the same thing on both sides. And if a number does not equal any other number, it's no solution. On this check your understanding, determine solutions to each of these problems, work them out. If the left side is equal to the right side, it will be infinite. If it is not equal to both sides, it will be no solution. And if you do get an answer, x equals a number, one number, it will be one solution. So I want you to try 3 through 10.